I'm a tree farmer. My father was a tree farmer. My grandfather was a tree farmer. For nearly 100 years, we've grown trees, and that's been our total substance to feed us, to clothe us. And also along the way, I've helped co-found the Champion Tree Project a number of years ago. And more recently, Archangel Ancient Trees. 18 years ago, I was woken up one night and I had a vision. And I was instructed to follow this vision to go out into the world and locate and find the largest, oldest living things on this planet. Things that are several hundred to several thousand years old, living beings that were a thousand years old when Jesus walked the earth, older than Stonehenge, they're still here, still alive. Wow, what an assignment. How do you do this? I was compelled to follow this vision, which has been my passion for nearly 20 years. And I've crisscrossed this country with various teams, with Archangel Ancient Tree and Champion Tree, searching for the largest, oldest living things, not just in this country, but other countries also. But why? Why would you wander around with a team of people looking to clone the largest and oldest living things on earth? There's easier ways to earn a living. Well, that answer is, is to archive their genetics. In this country, we've cut down 98% of our old growth trees. 98% are gone. The best genetics of the virgin old growth trees that for thousands of years through natural selection were the strongest, the hardiest, the best mother trees to keep these pristine ecosystems that filter our air and our water, that do so many services that we don't even know about them yet. But I'll tell you about a few of these, especially with the redwoods, because I came to speak to you about old growth redwood trees and old growth redwood forests. And why? Because right where I'm standing and right where you're sitting, we're sitting smack dab in the middle of the only Coast Redwood Range on planet Earth, a range that's 500 miles long. It begins just above the Oregon border, and it ends in Big Sur, and there's no other ones like it on Earth. Now comes the bad news. Before we had a chance to study this ecosystem and its components, before we studied these trees at all or their canopies, we cut down 95% of the redwood old growth forest that we're standing and sitting in the middle of right now. We killed them. Before we studied them, before we knew what they did. And one of the most eminent tree geneticist who lives here in San Francisco, who for 50 years has dedicated his life to study redwoods and sequoias, has said, we know embarrassing little about how redwood trees function. So we killed beans that are two to 3,000 years old. Some of these beans that we've cloned were 1,000 years old when Jesus walked the earth. And right here where we're sitting is the middle of that pristine old growth forest that clean the water, clean the air, provide habitat, shade, aerosol, beneficial aerosols that are natural disinfectants and antiseptics, clean the water. That's what a pristine ecosystem looks like. That's what this looked like, quite similar. When we walk out of here today, what have we done? And what's that cost? This is what it used to look like around this neighborhood. Quite similar for 10,000 years. Now I know that you've heard lots of alarming, bad news data. Environmentally where we're at today. We have enormous environmental challenges that threatens our very existence as human beings on this earth. Make no mistake, the science is there. 
There's thousands of scientists hoping to get an opportunity to tell you the truth. One of those scourges that we face to hand down to our children, just one of them, and I'm not talking about the 450 dead zones now in our oceans and the Great Lakes. The largest body of fresh water on Earth, I live right near there, it's called Lake Superior. It's an ocean. Did you know that almost entirely all of Lake Superior is a dead zone now? Nothing grows there. How did we do that? What happens if we lose it? Okay, but today I'm going to talk about redwoods and old growth redwood forests. When our grandfathers and our fathers, and even today, we mindlessly took down the old growth forests of redwoods that are thousands of years old. What do we do to affect the ecosystems of the oceans? The very mammals that we just heard about, do those redwood trees affect the mammals? Yeah. Is our hard science prove it? Yes. How about our reefs? Your reefs? Yeah. It's all connected. So as we deforested this, it not only affects the oceans, the mammals and the reefs, the water quality, the dead zones. There's hard science right now, folks, that by taking down that range to profit a few, it affects the weather all the way to Montana, the droughts in Montana. Science shows are correlated to the deforestation of this coastline. They're living, breathing, Organisms just like we are, just like the dolphins, just like the whales. But in that ecosystems, there's millions of different living things that are biodiverse, from the microorganisms in the soil to the birds that live in these ecosystems, to the pollinators that we need so much to pollinate our fruit. This time, I'm going to take the gloves off. And this time, I'm going to speak not just for us, not just for my children, but your children and our grandchildren to come. It's time we told the truth, took stock, and said, what on earth have we done? Well, sorry to say, you're not unique. 98% of the old growth forests here in the United States has been taken down. In fact, Thomas Jefferson wrote that the forests were so thick that a squirrel could go up the, into the canopy of a tree in Virginia and not leave that canopy until it reached the Mississippi River. Have any of you driven that lately? How much is gone? 76% of the old growth forests in the world, we've cut them down. And the sad thing is, we didn't study them. Not just the tree, but the ecosystems they created. Now, climate change. Real fast fact. Heard it on the news on the way here we've recorded almost 16,000 record high temperatures in the first 100 days just here in the United States. 16,000 where I come from in February. For decades in February, snow is supposed to be two to three feet tall. We have an average of 110 inches of snowfall a year. We should be skiing, snowmobiling, and ice fishing. We had a 10-day period this February, it was 85 to 90 degrees. Great for golfing, but at what cost? We need those cold temperatures to keep the diseases and the insects at bay so they don't devastate of what's left of the forest that we have left. And the forest we have left, we have geographic amnesia, we think look normal and healthy, right? Wrong. Almost every forest in the United States today has been cut over two, three, four, five times. So when the loggers went in, they took the best of the best and left the junk. The crooked ones, the diseased ones, the small ones. Let it grow for 70 or 80 years, went back in and took them again and left the junk. Well, after you do that, you leave the junk of the junk of the junk three or four times. What have you done to that forest? and its immune system. We need those forests more now today than ever. It's been 26,000 years or thereabouts since we've had climate like this, I understand. 
We need those forests to cool the planet. We need those forests to take the toxins, the mercury, the dioxins, and all those horrible things out of our water and our soil. We need those forests to aerosol out the natural disinfectants and antibiotics that keep the 350 plus new diseases that are racing around the world. Did you know that the, our forests are a corridor that stop the spread of those diseases? And now that we've deforested the planet, they race around the planet. There are so many things trees do. What we saw them as a two before, a hot tub, building material, and we didn't understand their worth. But, well, Archangel Ancient Tree has spent many years with lots of people and a crackerjack team with the grand idea of trying to clone the largest, oldest redwoods and clone the largest, oldest giant sequoias that live right here in your state that are no longer here. When we pursued that idea or that quest to archive the genetics of the 5% of the greatest, biggest, oldest trees that are left, most experts said it was nearly impossible or impossible. And as a matter of fact, the oldest giant sequoia that was ever successfully cloned, because we want clones, not seed, was that there was a drop-off line at 80 years old. We were shooting for trees that are two to 3,000 years old. They darn near laughed us out of your state. But we said, those genetics are important. Those genetics can be utilized. We know the known lineage for 10,000 years of natural selection. Most redwoods don't live to be 1,000 years old, but some, a few, and we don't know how, live 2,000 years old, 3,000 years old, and we don't know how or why. Don't you think that's important? So we began this quest of cloning the redwoods, and I'm happy to say Archangel has been successful cloning 63 of the largest, oldest coast redwoods in this 500 mile range. I would like to share with you the impossible. This is the world's first clone of a 3,000 year old giant sequoia. It's yours. And it's yours. Archangel Ancient Tree is a nonprofit, and we worked our tails off the whole team. I'm just one of a team. But why did we do this, and why is it important? Why are these 3,000 year old genetics important? Because we have children and we have grandchildren, don't we? And if we don't repair this ecosystem, if we don't put this ecosystem back, the oceans will suffer, the whales will suffer, the dolphins will suffer, thousands of species will suffer. And it just might be the undoing for our great great grandchildren. How can that be? Somebody better go after climate change. And somebody better make a dent in the CO2 in the atmosphere, don't you think? Well, let's do it. Let's dream big. Let's do the impossible and make it simple. And I came here to give you an opportunity. And I've brought you an opportunity to be a world leader, perhaps one that's more important than computers or technology, because if we don't do this, that won't matter. Nothing will matter. What I'm proposing to you is the opportunity to help me rebuild the world's first old growth redwood forest. And that opportunity starts right here, where it was, that it no longer is. For the first time in the history of the world, let's take these hard earned clones, the exact genetic clones of old growth forests, and let's begin to replant and replace the most iconic, beloved, globally revered forest on earth. There is no forest on earth in any country you can travel to that is revered as much as the redwood forest.
they're as well known as the brand Coca-Cola. If you travel to countries that I have, two things they do know, they know Coca-Cola and they know Redwoods. All right, so we made some mistakes. We could play the blame game. He did it, she did it, they did it, and what? Nah, that's not gonna help us. We're sitting right smack dab in the middle of a 500 mile, pristine, iconic Redwood Range. But I was so tickled and relieved that they planted a few around the perimeter of the parking lot. Did any of you notice that when you came in? But I say, let's plant an old growth forest for the first time in the world with pure 100% old growth forest genetics. The trees that have withstood the test of time. Do we know if the genetics are more important or better? No. But if we don't preserve them, what will we ever know? But you can bet Wilt Chamberlain's mom and dad weren't 5'2 and 5'3. <laughs> you can bet that trees are still around after 3,000 years, probably have a pretty good shot at facing what we're heading into. Isn't that simple logic? The problem is it's never been done before. Thanks to Archangel, it's done now, and we have lots of these. And we can make millions of more of these very, very quickly through tissue culture. But the first one's a corker. It's impossible, don't you know? Well, we're stubborn. We didn't give up. And I propose this to you, to everyone in this room. Let's take 50 of these trees. And let's find five acres somewhere in this area. And let's plant these 50 trees, the world's first old growth redwoods. And we'll water these trees until they get strong. And you know what? These trees will clean the air, the water. They'll shade this planet. They'll provide habitat ecosystem restoration. That'll be a model in the envy of the world, this first step. And for 2,000 years, we're going to pay it forward. For 2,000 years, seven days a week, day and night, we'll put these back to work. Now, I don't know how many generations of my grandchildren or yours that is. But I've come here to offer you that opportunity to help me do this. It's time we put it back. It's time that Silicon Valley is not the envy and the model of the world for just communications and technology. Let's show the world how you restore an ecosystem the best way that we know how. Could you help us? Would you do it for your grandchildren? 